Um, so we have had several exciting talks on scattering amplitudes, which offered um, various and complementary insights in many aspects of, uh, of this um, vast field. And I'm going to guide you through s several, well, yet another um, small neighborhood in this interesting area, which is um, the scattering amplitudes in three dimensions. So why are we interested in scattering amplitudes in three dimensions? Well, amplitudes are most, <coughs> most thoroughly studied in four dimensions for obvious reasons, but, <coughs> but sometimes it's um, often useful to move between the dimensions and make comparisons and see if, um, I mean, which of the special features, uh, which of the nice features in, in these recent works are special to four dimensions and which are more general. And if you go down in dimension, um, dimension three is a little special because um, you know, in one plus one dimension, the kinematics is too restricted and you always need special treatment. Whereas um, in three dimensions, you still have some room for non-trivial dynamics, although it's more constrained than the usual dynamics in four dimensions. Um, I'm going to pick the analog of the closed cousin of n equals four supermills in, in three dimensions, which is the ABJM theory. And most of my talk will focus on the three amplitudes in the planar sector. And the two main actors of my play will be these um, amplitude generating integrals. One is called the Grassmannian and one is the, called the twist, twister string integral. And I'm going to explain to you what they are how they are related and what they are good for. And they have, well, both of them have um, their elder cousins in four dimensions, and I'll make um, some comparisons as I go along. Um, the talk is based on these papers, and here are my collaborators with uh, varying degrees of expertise and maturity. Um, right. So, well, we have seen ABGM theory at this conference several times, so it's a three-dimensional n equals six super conformal trans matter theory. And we have four complex bosons and fermions which um, transform covariantly under the um, SO6 R symmetry. And we are going to study the color ordered amplitudes of this theory, and um, we have gauge fields, but since this is a trans theory, the gauge fields don't appear as a on-shell degrees of freedom, they just mediate the interactions. So the external particles of the scattering process will always be these um, bifundamental fields. So the number of external particles must be even, and we will call, um, label them by this 2K. Well, we have to look at the kinematics a little bit carefully. So we can, as usual, we can write down the non-momentum in this bi-spinner notation. The difference from the usual four-dimensional case is that um, the spinner is real instead of complex. So we have p equals lambda lambda instead of p equals lambda lambda bar. And we can supersymmetrize this kinematics easily by introducing some Grassmann odd variables, uh, three of them, um, which I call eta here. And then you, Using these kinematic variables, we can group all the Onshell states in, in these two conjugate um, Onshell superfields and express the amplitudes in terms of these Onshell superfields. And the cyclic symmetry and the um, three dimensional analog of the helicity can be expressed in terms of these super amplitudes in a very compact way. Okay, here's the um, Grassmann integral. So, when Arkani Ahmed, Kachazo, Chong, and Kaplan invented this uh, Grassmannian formula in four dimensions first, in, in, back in 2009, one of their key, key insights was that um, you can regard the conservation of momentum among n, n particles in, in, in this way. I mean, yeah, you can rewrite it in this way. And it looks like um, the orthogonality condition between these um, two, two planes one spent by the lambda spinners and the other one by lambda bar spinners. And there is a natural GLN action acting on these spinners. And the derivation of the famous BCFW recursion relation in, in scattering amplitudes 
makes use of a one special corner of this VLN action. And in a sense, the Grossmannian integral of ACCK is a way to tap the full power of this um, GLN action and um, sort of um, combine many steps of BCFW recursion in, in one step. So geometrically, um, for, for the amplitude with n particles and k negative helicity states, they introduce this um, auxiliary k plane in, in this n dimensional space. And the picture is that um, the lambda two plane is contained in this auxiliary plane, lambda bar is orthogonal to it, so that this relation is automatically satisfied. Can we do the same thing in three dimensions? Yes, except that um, this is a typo, which um, I cleared up last night, but it's not ref reflected here, sorry. Um, so you can again rewrite the momentum conservation as this orthogonality condition, except that we have the same lambda here and lambda bar there. No, sorry, same lambda here and, and there. So instead of the GLN action, we have to use the ON action. And since some um, lambda has to be orthogonal to itself, um, geometrically it should be viewed as a null vector or null, null to plane in this case. So if you try to generalize it to the full Grassmannian, you, what you get is not the usual Grassmannian, but what is known as the orthogonal Grassmannian, which um, is the space of null k planes, maximally null k planes in 2k dimensional space. Okay, so you, based on these ideas, um, I was able to write down the Grassmannian formula like um, about a year after the four dimensional Cosmos was first invented. So this matrix C, k by 2k matrix, is the integral variable, and there is a natural on GLK action acting on from the left. And this delta function imposes the null constraint. And this is the only kinematic part, and the denominator contains some collection of consecutive minors. Using the kinematic variables, the supersymmetric super version of it, um, it's fairly easy to um, prove the superconformal symmetry of the whole expression. Well, unlike in four dimensions, we have to take an extra step to, to use this um, null condition, but otherwise it's pretty straightforward. And the cyclic symmetry is slightly non-trivial, but again, using this same null constraint, you can prove it without much difficulty. Here is an example of an explicit form of the amplitude. So this is the six-point amplitude, well, actually the six fermion component, component of it. And as you can easily guess, some this is much simpler than whatever you can get from the Feynman rules. And also, as I already said, um, the Grassmannian formula has the BCF recursion relations built in. So um, you, you have to be able to see this BCFW factorization without much difficulty, and th that is the case in this particular example. Next, uh, I move on to the twister string integral. So the history is, uh, is a little long in four dimensions. Actually, the twister string model was proposed by Witten in 2003, and then there was this particular version of it by Roy Van Sperl and Volnovich called the uh, connected prescription, and um, it expresses the amplitude as an integral over some fixed degree curves in this um, twist, uh, super twister space. And when the Grassmannian formula came out, it was natural to ask how these two different formulations are related. And um, some people, including Arkanya Medin collaborators and Spradley and Volovich and collaborators, um, it, it should be here, but it's, it's missing. Anyway. Um, so the idea is roughly the following. So you start with the Grassmann integral, which is a contour integral, and you deform the integrand of that Grassmannian in a way that um, the poles are shifted, but the uh, values of the residues are unchanged. And then after integrating out some of the variables, you can reduce your integral down to something that is equivalent to the twisted string theory, and geometrically, um, you are localizing your integral from the entire Grassmannian to the image of this 
so-called Veronisma from the GR2 command to GRK command. In three dimensions, the story worked in the reverse order. We found the Grassmannian first. So we decided to apply the same deformation and localization idea to the Grassmannian. And this is the result that we get in, in the end. Um, well, the whole thing looks a bit complicated, but there are two things that you can easily see. That is, um, we are using the same Veronese map from the GR2 command to the source of Grassmannian. And we have some extra de delta functions remaining, which are inherited from the original null constraint that we started from in the Grassmannian formula. And these Jacobian factors are just about right to ensure that all the symmetry properties are correctly produced. So here is an example of how things are deformed in, at the level of the denominator. We have some non-consecutive minors appearing there. But we had one problem when we first wrote down this formula because um, the precise prescription for, for this deformation depends on how you choose the contour. And I mean, the contour problem also is crucial when you want to actually compute any amplitude. And we, weren't, we, we hadn't fully sorted out the uh, contour problem at the, time of, of, at the time when we first wrote down this formula. Another, perhaps more important problem was that um, although we had the formula, we didn't have the proper string theory that actually produced this um, integral. And it didn't take, well fortunately, it did, didn't take too long for some smart people to figure out what, what the mod models should be. Actually, actually, these are slightly unconventional types of um, string theories, I must say. So um, last year, Kacha Zohe Yuan, well, experts in using Riemann surfaces to produce um, amplitudes, um, they f found a twister string-like expression using rational maps in four dimensions, which works for both for the Young Mills and, and gravity. And they um, invented a slightly novel way of dressing the amplitude by wave functions and doing the dimensional reduction. I'm not saying that ABGM theory is, is, is a dimensional reduction of any higher dimensional gauge theory in any s s or, uh, simple manner, but they, they somehow um, used uh, very general properties of the amplitudes, like um, factorization limits, to make it work. Early this year, Engelunt and Roiban wrote down another model, which is, looks more like um, conventional open string theory based on Berkowitz formalism, with the target space being this um, supersymmetric projective space. Well, this theory has more states and bigger symmetry group than, than the ABGM theory, but they found a way to truncate the theory to ABGM states and reproduce all the amplitudes in a form consistent with our uh, formula that showed you earlier. But before these models were invented, um, we had some confidence that our formula, the twister string-like formula, should work. And one of the co confidence came from the identities that, are, that should hold among many different amplitudes. So let's recall that the famous KK identity from the 80s reflects the fact that the usual trace basis in this um, color ordered amplitude is overcomplete, and once you um, take into account uh, all the Jacobi identities, the number of independent number of basis amplitudes gets reduces from m minus one factorial to n minus two factorial. And you can go a st one step further if you also pay attention to the kinematic variables. So this um, more recent and famous BCJ re relation tells you that the so-called kinematic numerator satisfy relations which resembles the Jacobi identity. And using these relations, you can reduce the number of basis amplitudes even further. So can we write down similar identities in three dimensions, like in ABGM theory? Yes, well, the KK identity relies entirely on the color algebra. 
So the color algebra is, for ABGM theory is, is a little different from the ordinary Lie algebra, but you, I mean, you can still work out the Jacobi-like <coughs> identity and use them to reduce the number of basis amplitudes as much as you can. So the, we obtain these sequences for um, four, six, eight, and 10 point amplitudes. Unfortunately, the combinatorics is uh, significantly more complicated, so we, we still don't have the closed form formula for the number of basis amplitudes in general tree amplitudes. Well, at least the good thing is that um, we can reproduce all the KK relations from this um, twister string-like formula because, I mean, in the middle of these um, complicated Jacobian and delta function expressions, the only thing that is sensitive to this um, permutation is, is this um, simple-looking and universal denominator. So using essentially um, partial fractions many times, we were able to reproduce all the KK identities that were required by the color algebra. Well, what about PCJ? Um, the story is substantially more complicated. So let me move slightly out of the ABGM theory for a moment. So people studied PCJ relations in many different contexts, and they showed that the Yang-Mills theory for Yang-Mills theory, the BCJ relation works in any dimensions as long as you put the uh, kinematic variables on shell. And, but if you write down the BLG-like theory based on this um, three algebra, it works only in three dimensions. Another related and interesting observation was that at four and six points, the BLG doubling, I mean using the double copy of this uh, kinematic numerators, works it, uh, it works for both the Yang-Mills and trans simons matter theories. So that means um, you can con reconstruct the same gravity amplitude from two very different looking ways. So um, there were some confusions about the, how PCJ works for BLG and ABJM, and it turned out that um, for four point and six point, it, it works more or less the same way for both theories. But we found that um, from 8.10 on, there is, no, there is no PCJ relation for ABGM theory in any conventional sense. However, we also found some, something we called bonus relation and even more bonus relation, um, which seems to indicate that uh, there are still more things to explore in, in this direction. Okay, as the last topic, um, I'm going to visit the Onshell diagrams and positive Grassmannians. I'm sure many of you have seen these pictures at some point over the past couple of years. Um, this is the Onshell diagram by um, these people, which basically give you a sort of microscopic decomposition of this Grassmannian formula in terms of these simple building blocks, which are nothing but the um, Onshell three-point amplitudes. And they already suggest that you should be able to do similar things in three dimensions using the building blocks where um, the vertices are at the own shell four point amplitudes and there is a unique um, in internal line you can introduce. And if you ignore the, the subtleties <coughs> coming from the bubbles and Young Baxter relations, um, the own shell diagrams are uniquely defined by how external legs are external particles are connected to each other pairwise. And you can study the geometry of this um, resulting orthogonal gra Grassmannian space. The complex version has this um, coset representative representation O2K mod UK, which um, curiously is the same thing as the pure spinner space. But one of the things that um, Arkanyam and collaborators did was to move, move to this um, positive Grassmannian which basically um, maps the poles in, in, in the integration measure of, of your original formula to the boundaries of this um, positive cells in this real geometry. And yeah, there is a slightly subtle but nevertheless some um, straightforward way of um, taking the real slices and defining the positive part of the Grassmannian space. But if you want to understand 
the relation between different um, diagrams at a deep level and introduce these uh, PCFW like uh, deformations in a systematic way, um, you need some way to organize different diagrams and which um, exhibits the relation between the different diagrams in a clear way. And without too many math papers to support us, um, we decided to invent something. So um, the, in the first step, we just um, put these external particles along the diagonal of this young tableau like um, notation. So at this step, we are not doing anything really new, except that um, by breaking the manifest cyclic symmetry, we can fix the young box ambiguity in a canonical way. But then um, my junior collaborator found a way to save some extra spaces by removing the um, sort of lazy cells and, and put everything in, in this um, K by K box. And actually this um, folded tableau turned out to be even better than this original version because um, they showed how to map these diagrams to matrix expressions that has to enter the Grassmannian formula. So this is um, how we organize the different diagrams at six point in, with um, different number of crossings in this vertical direction. And this, is, this um, shows you a snapshot of um, how this tableau can be used to um, introduce the explicit coordinate charts for this, this um, post positive orthogonal Grassmannian. And the integration measure takes a very simple form and the um, contour problem can be more or less solved by these um, new insights. And I have to mention there, is, there are alternative um, coordinates by Huang, Wen, and Xie, um, which has a slightly more complicated integration measure, but has the advantage of um, making many symmetries more, more manifest. Uh, on the math side of it, um, we can compute this generating function for, for these graphs and compute the Euler characteristic. And, and the result indicates that the, what we, I mean, what we found is like an Eulerian Euler poset in the math literature, and it, it was actually proven by a preprint that appeared this week. Okay, um, to summarize, um, let me just mention that there are many hard works that had been done on loop amplitudes. So um, the three loop diagrams were computed at four point and two loops were computed at six points. And one of the, okay, um, the disco amazing discovery was that the um, infrared divergence had, had a, exactly the same form as in N equals four spam mills. And there are other related um, interesting issues at loop level. Um, like unitarity and analyticity, but since my time is up, let me um, just um, leave it here. Thank you. What do you mean by symplectic Grassmannian in 5D, 6D? Uh, or to be more exact, what's the problem you'd want to apply it to? Well, I'm, I'm just saying, um, I was just suggesting the possibility of um, rewriting this momentum conservation in terms of spinners in this geometric way. So, you know, it, it just depends on the property of spinners in each dimension. The, the spinners are real in three dimensions, complex in four dimensions, and symplectic real in, in five and six dimensions. But the problem is in five or six dimensions, um, I don't think uh, we have um, too many field theories where you can I mean, where it's meaningful to compute the... Yeah, that's what I was trying to ask about. For example, in six dimensions, there's this nice zero-two theory, but it's very unlikely yeah, it has yeah. an S matrix. Right. Are there further questions?